Well, our next guest was the leader of the band called the Chesterfields, who have been on our show uh, a couple times out of New York City. But uh, he has his own project now, a solo project. He's based out of New York City. We're talking with him in New York today. And uh, we welcome and want to thank him for his brand new album called Dawnbreaker. We welcome once again to WVOF in the Upper Room with Joe Kelly, Mr. Scott Sherrard. How you doing, Scott? All right, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so man, this is a great record, and I was telling you off air, we're really enjoying it. And uh, first off, I mean, the Chesterfields, amazing band, and and uh, you and Sean and and the rest of the company doing a great thing. But the decision to uh, go ahead with your own songs and your name on the cover, where did that start, and what was the uh, decision to do it? Well, the uh, the last uh, Chesterfield album, um, which was an EP actually. Um, it was a, a five-song EP, and when we started to do it, uh, it was a situation where we were both sort of, Sean and I, when I say we were both, because we were basically the, the core of the Chesterfield. Sean played uh, drums and bass, and I was playing guitar and doing the lead vocals, and we were both sort of starting to go in, you know, it's the classic situation of, you know, great friends, but sort of going in different directions creatively. Mm-hmm. And uh, on that particular record, um, we were working with a producer, Charlie Martinez, and uh, it was sort of like the three of us, and uh, we ended up doing uh, my own material for that album. And in the past, Chesterfield's albums, it had always been you know coll- collaborative material, and it sort of kicked off um, a different direction for me. In the past, with the Chesterfields, especially our records like Henry Street Soul and the one before that, they were more lots of horns, are, you know, definitely heavy. R&B, like we were listening to a lot of Earth, Wind, and Fire. We were listening to a lot of D'Angelo and the Roots. And all that stuff was formulating. With the last Chesterfield VP, this rock thing crept into me, and I just started turning up my guitar again and sort of letting that lead the songs. And, um, and as I said, working with the producer and engineer, Charlie Martinez, on that record, Charlie and I sort of uh, you know, struck up a bond, and it led into him and I, after the EP, just kept demoing together. Mm-hmm. And that spiraled into me doing my solo album. And another thing I should say is I've always played uh, drums, I've always played uh, some keyboards and bass, and uh, in addition to being a guitarist and singer. And uh, when, when Charlie and I started working, we, st- we work out of this small demo studio in upstate New York, and I just started playing all the instruments, and it snowballed. And so it was the year after that EP came out, we basically just cut this record <laughs> on yeah, our right. weekends off, so to speak. Uh, you know, I, I was looking at the liner notes, uh, and, and you do play just about everything on, on this record. I mean, you, you associate with some of the best players around, but I mean, you you know, these are your vocals and practically rhythm section and, and guitars and bass. Man, B3 organ, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's one of my favorite instruments. In, this, in the demo studio we have up here, which, well, it's not really a demo studio now, is it? That, I think Charlie Martin has the, you know, my co-producer and engineer, he did a, he did a genius job of of engineering it and really sort of tricking it into being a really professional sounding record. Um, you know, kudos to him on that. And Charlie did play bass on, on four songs, Charlie Martinez. And then we also had, um, actually, funny enough, we had two tracks left over from that EP session, the Chesterfield EP session a little over a year ago. And we retooled those and we mixed those, and that has Charlie Drayton playing drums. So I got, you know, and of course, Charlie Drayton's, fantastic i've always been a huge fan he, so. did, he did stuff with keith richards right he did yeah he, yeah he played on all the keith richards soul albums he plays mostly bass on them but he also plays drums and he's okay he's just absolutely you know incredible I, I remember seeing him on saturday night live and i think they switched up he was playing bass and drums right exactly yeah him and steve jordan used to okay do that. right right that was cool yeah so, yeah he's he's just you know he's another genius so, hey you uh, got the opportunity to do that with your your band now yeah right, exactly right, yeah. so so I'm hoping I'm hoping to actually rein Charlie in at one point, but right. I've, I have a really uh, I have a really fun live band now that does an amazing job, of course. <laughs> right? Yeah, you can't it's, slight them. Yeah, it's it's great to it's it was great to play all the instruments on the record, but it's it's even better to hear you know guys who are really incredible like Charlie Drayton you know play the parts back to you. <laughs> right. Uh, our special guest right now here at WVUF in the upper room, Mr. Scott Sherrard. His website, Scott. S H A R R A R D dot com. Really coolly redesigned the website and some great information. 
And, of course, you can order the CD through the website. It's available also at iTunes, right? Yeah. Yeah, which is cool. Um, and the ch- whole Chesterfield's back catalog is actually available also on my website, which okay. uh, that, that material wasn't available for a long time. And just last month, we, uh, we reissued everything. So you can get that stuff, too. Well, why don't we get into a song? You talked about the, the rock edge to uh, some of the songs that inspired this CD. Um, I've got In Her Arms queued up, so tell us about the song right into this one, and then we'll push play on it. Yeah, In Her Arms was uh, actually, it's, it's appropriate. That was probably the second song I wrote coming out of these sessions with uh, Charlie Martinez. And, uh, you know, at the time, I was listening to a lot of that, that, you know, first, second Prince albums. You know, right. when he does rock, it's somehow still funky, and it has a, it just has so many elements. And I wanted to, I wanted to do like I was listening to that. And I was listening to like I remember at that time, like Hey Ya was just getting to the end of its reign. You know, the Outcast song. Oh yeah, right. And right. I wanted to do, I wanted to do like what if you know, what if somehow Prince did a song that was written by Elvis Costello and Outcast. <laughs> hey, you, then you hit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why I was. That's kind of where I was creatively at the time. Uh huh. So it was. A, it was a cool thing to kick it off. It was a fun track to make. This one I did almost. I recorded almost totally by myself, actually, which was fun. So. So so we'll listen to it right now and come back and speak once. More. All right, great music. Brand new music from Scott Sherrard, who uh, was one of the founders of the group The Chesterfields. But hey, it's it's great to be uh, doing your own thing and. Uh, his solo CD, its uh, debut CD, Dawnbreaker, is out, available through his website, scottsherrard.com. That's called Inner Arms, and he's been kind enough to join us. He's on the road. He's out of the city, I guess. Uh, you know, I guess you're from the Midwest and been in New York for, for about how long living there? I've been in New York for almost, no, it'll be nine years, actually, Okay. Uh, mid-August. <laughs> coming well, up on the anniversary. So, so you still got you still got family of course back in uh, Wisconsin? Actually, actually my family has has moved. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, they they move a lot. They've they've actually moved a lot. So, uh but yeah, they actually live in upstate New York now. They moved here about 3 years ago, but uh they were in in Milwaukee. I'm from uh, I was born in in the Detroit area in Michigan. Mm-hmm. So that's where my family is actually from. Um so that's that's kind of my background. A lot of moving. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And of course the music world always changing and uh man, since since you got into it, uh you net now independent record pushing your own C D, uh, which is available. All our listeners, they can go right now to Scott dot com and you also can buy the Chesterfields uh back catalog, which is great. Uh the E P and Henry Street Soul. Uh this record I know uh You've been listening to all different influences, of course, and you play everything on the record, but uh, there's something interesting we were talking offline about. Uh, you have kind of a blog for your playlist of the month, and you could tell some of Scott's uh, musical taste right there. You know, on the ride up to New York, I don't know if you listen to CDs. What, what have you been listening to in the car or on your player? Uh, late, lately, I've been on a. We were actually talking about this in the break too, but it's funny. I've been I've been on this Paul Weller kick for a while. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And did you I, hear when he played at FUV? No, uh, I didn't. Yeah, he played right in the studios there. That's great, man. Yeah, it's not great. I mean, great. he's since uh, since Wild Wood came out. Wild Wood came out when I was in high school, and uh, and that was in the late '90s. And that record just it really turned me on to the to the art of making a record again. You know. It's like a 17-track album, and I remember I sort of I sort of filed that record away in my brain, and I bought everything by him since then. But even when the Chesterfields made Henry Street Soul, I was checking him out. Mm-hmm. And recently, I was in California, and I just randomly walked into a record store, and I picked up this B-sides collection oh, of this wow. stuff. Uh-huh. And I list, I was like driving up the California coast listening to it, man. And I haven't been able to take it off since. And it's just he's like. I think he's really been doing innovative stuff for a long time. I think he should be a lot, you know, a lot more popular here. Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. You know, in England, he's like a uh, England. He's worshipped. You know, uh-huh. he's, he's very popular there. But uh, I think he's been doing some really fresh stuff. And uh, you know, as we were talking about too, like Van Hunt, I think is just, you know, I think he's on a whole nother level. I think a good like at least half of his record is some stuff that people are not doing right he, now. Is he you from know? the UK too? Actually, Van Hunt is from the South. He's from Atlanta. Okay. And he produced uh, uh, another great artist named Rossan Patterson. Okay, yeah, I, I, I dug him. He's from Jersey, I think. 
I think so, yeah. but he's definitely Rasan is definitely in California now. Okay. Um, and who else? You know, P, you know, I'm pretty eclectic, man. Like I'm still digging the new Elvis Costello. I love everything he does. Uh, PJ Harvey. You know, I, I try to keep it really open. You right, know? right. Because uh, I think that's I think it's the best way. I think it's one of the things we're missing in music right now is is just that you know that openness. And I think anytime you put on a record by these people I'm talking about, or if you put on a record by you know even any of the great records, whether it be Stevie Wonder or Jimi Hendrix or Joni Mitchell. You don't really hear style, you know. Right. You just hear sort of a, you know, like a perfect vision of everything you love, you know. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of, of every element in the music, you know. And that's, that's where I think it's got to go if, if music's going to continue to evolve. And the great thing is that we have artists who are doing it right now, you know, like those, like those few that I've mentioned. And, uh, you know, it's just really a matter of, of, of bringing them to the fore, you know. Well, Scott Sherrard uh, also, uh, he had a great CD release party. Tell us about the release party, uh, how to go down, and uh, what is involved in, in getting the party together. Well, it was, it was great, man. I mean, it was, it, was, uh, it was a little bit, it was, anytime you're putting a show together in New York City and you're doing it on your own, you know, it can be a little bit of a, a, little bit of a trip. You know, it was uh-huh. a good month of planning, but the venue was, uh, was great. It was at Crash Mansion, uh, which is uh, down on the Bowery in downtown Manhattan, and uh, it, was, it was, you know, they have a beautiful stage. It was a, we had a great crowd. I was lucky that way, and uh, it really, you know, kicked things off. I'd done a preliminary gig at the Bitter End about two months before that, and then uh, this was back in late May, actually, that I had the CD release party, and uh, it, was a, it was a great gig. I have a, you know, as I was saying before, I have a great live band, too, so I was really blessed to have a great band with me that was performing you know the music really well and and as i said a great audience so looking forward to doing a lot more shows in the area coming up so well you're going to be back at the bit around looking uh thursday september 29th right? yeah it's a little ways off that's yeah. gonna, that's going to be the premiere of uh of a new lineup i've decided that when i was growing up playing music i i started playing music in the midwest you mentioned milwaukee before that's where i went to high school and started playing music when i first had my own band it was a trio and we used to we used to tour and play a lot in that area playing mostly blues and R&B, and uh, I just decided that, you know, about a year ago I decided at some point i got to get the trio back together, you know, bass, drums, guitar, and vocal. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what that's going to be on September 29th at the bitter end. I'm going to be bringing a trio in there and doing these songs off of Dawnbreaker as well as some new songs, and, and I'm also getting some, some interesting cover material together. Um, and we're going to go ahead and just and throw down like a trio. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, G and I were driving around Saturday night. And we listened to another station in town, and they were playing some like vintage Hendrix stuff. I had never heard t- talking about the trio, and there was some instrumental song. I was like, "This stuff's amazing!" I mean, just drum, bass, guitar, and yeah. well, when you talk about Jimmy, that's that's about as close to my heart as you can get. Right? Okay. I mean, yeah. Y- you know, band, band of Gypsies is the reason I play music. And you played with Buddy Miles, right? I did when uh-huh. I was very young. Uh-huh. When I was when I was uh but I must have been fifteen or sixteen, Buddy came into Milwaukee and did um a couple shows and did some recording sessions and he had me along for it. Uh at the time I was in a house band in Milwaukee. We were working every Thursday night at this club called the Up and Under that was a great club. And the club was awesome. It used to be a place that like Stevie Ray Vaughan and Robert Cray and BB King and Luther Allison, they all used to stop through when they'd play in town. So it was, it was a great hub. You know, and Buddy happened to come in, and he happened to stay a couple weeks, and it was a cool experience, man. I mean, he's, you know, he's still incredible. I remember one, we had a session, and, and uh, he was playing great drums on the session, and at the end of the session, he just went up to a Rhodes piano, and he started singing spirituals. Uh-huh. And we just sat and listened to him for like an hour. It was like one gospel after another, and it was incredible. I mean, the guy is like super, super talented. <laughs> yeah. So that that was a great experience. But wow. yeah, I mean, buddy, I mean, the band of gypsies. That's, you know, that's the template right there. You know. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> so so you'll be able to see that at the bitter end, and uh, we're gonna get into another song right now. We got a lot of positive response for this one, approval, and uh, you got some great vocals on here um, by yourself, and uh, this is uh, off of Scott Sherrard's CD, Dawn Breaker. You can get it now scott if uh it's not in your uh, record store indie record store we got a lot around here i'm sure they can find a way to get it there as well um 
So we'll give it a listen to this. And uh, you got time for one more segment, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, man. cool. This is WVOF. All right, that is more music from Scott Sherrard from the Dawnbreaker approval. And, uh, you know, we move over real quickly. And we're back with Scott Sherrard here at WVOF. So uh, we we're talking about, you know, Prince's influence on your music. And you, and you saw Prince of the Garden. Uh, on the musicology tour? Yeah. Yeah. Well, which night did you go of the three nights? I think there were three, right? It was the fir- I saw the first show, the first night. Okay, great. Yeah, man. It's like getting saved. Uh-huh. That's, right. like, <laughs> that's like the best guy we have. Yeah, right. You know, I Live mean, it's... performer, wow. You know, with, with Jimmy being gone and Joni being retired, it's like, you know, that's what we have. Mm-hmm. He's, I think he's really... He, he just gets better and better and better and better. And every time I see him live, I mean, I've seen him live, like, that was probably the sixth time I've seen him live. Mm-hmm. And uh, every time I see him, it's just, his, his, his game is so on. His singing, I mean, I think it's amazing, just even, just as a vocalist, just to go watch him hit every note perfect and, and still, you know, dance and still work the room and, you know, do such a wide variety of material, too. I mean, they do everything in that band. They improvise. They play rock. They play funk. They play, you know, he does, like, even folk-type stuff. He does acoustic set. It's like, how many people can you see do that? You know? Yeah, not too many. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. He's, it's, it's something to aspire to for every musician. You know, you've got to see him. Well, we, you know, you're, you're based out of New York now and uh, playing at the Bitter End and Crash Mansion and... Uh, well, what's New York like nine years later a- as a musician? Uh, what are the struggles and what's, what's, uh, what's seeing you're like positive, man, I want to stay here for a, a, a longer time? Well, I, I, I'm not sure I, I do. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> hey, you're um, honest, you're honest. But, but yeah, I, uh, you know, New York, um, at least the island of Manhattan uh, and, you know, anything, anything that's within a couple subway stops on the outside of it is you know, pretty much kind of like an outdoor shopping mall for the rich now. <laughs> you know, when, wow. I, when I moved to New York, you know, there were a lot of clubs. That everyone was dancing. Everyone was smoking cigarettes. It was laid back. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, the cigarette band, whatever. But the dancing, you know, they stopped the dancing in the clubs about five years ago, maybe a little over. Once that happened, it was like one live music venue after another has been shot down. You know, right, we've, right. we've lost, we've lost some institutions. We've lost the bottom line. We've lost the wetlands. We're about to lose CBGBs. You know, we lost uh, Manny's car wash a long time ago. Chicago blues too. Chicago right? blues. Yeah. I mean, and these are, um, and then there was, of course, the smaller gigs that we all used to do. You know, uh, us musicians used to do where we would be hired, and it would pay well. We would be creative. We'd play three sets. People would dance. We'd be exposed to new audiences. And we weren't responsible for bringing a crowd in. All those venues have disappeared. Mm-hmm. So um, it's very, very, very difficult to be a musician and be in New York City right now. Um, really, it comes down to sort of an art of compromise. And I know, I know myself, I do, I do sideman work uh, quite a bit just to keep things rolling. Right, and, right. Uh, you know, when you end up doing that, you basically end up, you know, being out of town all the time. And... Uh, it's interesting. I also last fall I went to uh, I went to Paris and I had some meetings with music publishers over there and I checked out the music some of the live music scene while I was there and I was really impressed and uh, and I said I was just in Northern California as well and I had sort of a similar experience. I think um, you know New York has just gotten it got too tight you know especially during uh, you know for all the great things that Giuliani did for crime it did terrible things for culture. <laughs> right. I'm so, sure a lot of people feel that way. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's a tough it's a really tough place to be, but I have to say when I moved there, you know, when I moved there in 97, I was right out of high school and it was great, man. And it was like sort of it was when it was starting to turn. You know, and I've I've kind of I've watched the city transform, you mm-hmm. know, and uh it's it's been it's a little it's a little tough that way, but you know, it's they still have, you know, a lot of the greatest musicians on the planet, the, the majority of them if you're playing blues or you're playing jazz or you're playing R&B or rock or whatever, the majority are in New York. <laughs> right, right. You know, so it's, it still kind of remains that way. But, um, you know, there's a lot of there's great live music scenes. There's a lot of better live music scenes everywhere else. 
So it's yeah. kind of interesting. I think even probably Trenton has a better live music scene. Oh, Trenton's happened, right? <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It's right. or Philadelphia definitely. Yeah, you know, South Street there. There's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of venues that, in New York. It's pretty much you know the Bleecker Street drag is great. Yeah. You know, but that's pretty much about it. You know, unless you're going to go to you know Carnegie Hall or the Bowery Ballroom or something. Yeah, I was always amazed with with New York the last few years the the lack of actual blues clubs or places. You know, you have a few, but. And you have some yeah. of the best guys. I mean, right. you know, you you have like Michael Powers. I mean, every time yeah. I see Michael Powers, it's like that guy's incredible. Plays o- over on Bleecker Street, right? Yeah, he plays yeah. at Terra Blues. He right. actually has a steady a steady gig there right now on right. Fridays and Mondays, I think. So, uh-huh. which is great. And he has a great record out that I've been listening to as well. Um, you know, but uh, that's that's the thing. You got you do have a lot of great musicians, but you just don't have the. I guess what it comes down to is you don't have the the community to sort of develop a sound anymore because you don't really have a a club that everyone congregates around. Right. You know, and you used to used to have that, but I think things will things will turn over and change. It's just kind of a awkward moment. But in the music business in general, I think things are getting a little bit better every year, you know, in terms of the underground is starting to bubble up just like, you know, just a little bit more every year. So that's positive, you know. Well, if you just tuned in right now, it's uh, 501. Scott Sherrard, his latest CD, The Dawn Breaker. He's uh, been our guest for the last 25, 30 minutes or so. Uh, you can go to his website, scottsherrard.com, and his last name is spelled S-H-A-R-R-A-R-D.com. And the CD is available through his website, iTunes, and also pick up the Chesterfields, his his old band's catalog right there. And, and before we get into uh, one final track, tell us about... The, uh, the show coming up on the 18th, uh, your other project. Yeah, on August 18th, I'm working at, uh, at this club, uh, Detour. It's, like, it's my favorite jazz venue, actually, in New York, because it's, it's very intimate. And uh, it's, I'm going to be exposing another side of myself. I actually I work a lot as a guitarist uh, playing jazz and playing you know, uh, different variations of it, playing instrumental music. And I've written a lot of instrumental music in the last year or two. And this group is uh, its an organ trio, but we do um, a different spin on organ trio. its We do a lot of electronic music grooves. So you'll have an acoustic drummer, a drummer with a drum set, but doing electronic grooves uh, with an organ, keyboards, and uh, myself on guitar. So it's, a, it's an interesting group. We do... A lot, I have a lot of original arrangements for the group of tunes by... We do a couple Bjork songs. Oh, wow. We do a couple Wayne Shorter tunes. We do... I even arranged some... Uh, I, I'm, I'm a nutcase for French Surrealists. So uh-huh. I got uh, Eric Satie. I took one of his tunes and I arranged it for the group. We do... Oh, you know, it definitely has sort of a... It's sort of like a Bitches Brew meets Bjork vibe. Wow. You that's know, but a, played by an organ trio. And the band is fantastic. John Riley, the drummer, is played with, like, Eric Lewis and Nora Jones. And Brian Charette, the keyboard player. Brian and I have been working together for years and years, and he's amazing. You can see him playing now with Bernard Purdy and, uh, and Jerry Vivino and Lou Donaldson. So he's a fantastic musician. And uh, they're great. They're, they're a lot of fun to watch, and it's a, it's, fun, it's a fun group. And it's a different thing. You know, it's... Uh, just playing the guitar and being an instrumental group, it's more of a meditative, you know, uh, vibe. And uh, it's, you know, obviously without the, without the vocals, without the direct storytelling, you can just kind of come and catch a vibe and hang out and have a drink. And, and we play all night, and it's free. It's, right. it's the only gig I do where there's no cover charge. So, and uh, we play all night. So it's, it's really laid back and fun. And uh, we have a lot of guests show up, too. Last time, a lot of great uh, musicians showed up and sat in, so you never know what's going to happen. And that's uh, Thursday, August 18th from 9 to 12, 30 p.m., free, no cover, 21 and over. And uh, it's at Detour. And then uh, don't forget, Thursday, September 29th at the Bitter End, 9.30 p.m. on Bleecker Street in Greenwich Village. Uh, one set, 9.30 p.m. And uh, when you go to the door, make sure you mention that you're here to see uh, Scott Sherrard. Let the, let the people in the house know. And uh, got to thank you, man. And you you got to come to the studio one time to play I'd love we, to. We get to do that, but you know, love to have you down here play the tunes. I'd love to. I've been doing some acoustic shows lately too, so it'd yeah, be, it'd be so a good opportunity to to show that off. Yeah, a little, check you, out your studio. Do it this so. fall, fall and winter when when the kids are back here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So so I know you still bring the funk. You bring a lot of styles, but we got a song queued up, Lady Fortune Teller, and uh, you know what was it like mixing this and playing this in the studio? 
Uh, this, <laughs> this, this was actually somewhat similar to the way Inner Arms went down. I tracked a lot of it by myself initially, uh, and then Charlie Martin, as my producer, and I just hooked up and finished it off. This went down real quick, and it's you know it's a groove it's it's a groove track all the way. I wanted to do again. This is actually funny enough. This is definitely it has a lot of early Prince influence to it, mm-hmm. um, and I just wanted to create kind of a modern sort of stomping funk groove with like a, a like a uh, hook that you can't get out of your head. So it's. That was kind of what I started with, and then just playing around with the drums and messing around, and then it just came out. So yeah, <laughs> it's I a think fun it, tune to do live. Yeah, I think it works. So, so yeah, it's uh, a lot. It's yeah. a lot of fun to do live. People, people always think they know what song it is. So that's right. been interesting. <laughs> yeah. So keep playing it. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So this is Scott Gerard. Thanks, Scott. Get the Dawnbreaker in your collection right now. This is Lady Fortune Teller. Thanks, Joe.